Guys, our guest today is a television icon, Rob Deerdeck. <laughs> My brother modeled the Team 10 house after the fantasy No, fight. look, he met with me. And it was like, I'm going to be a billionaire. <laughs> you got to come down here. I was like, bro, I'm house. not going to the Team 10 house. You know what I'm saying? I'm 40 years old. You think Fantasy Factory was as big as it was because of Chanel's laugh? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, just he just turned into her. You are the original reaction channel. You do not drop that beer. <laughs> it's like a weird improv art form for me. But make no mistake, it is only for the money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? An empty water bottle? <laughs> oh, it's fine. You should put some prime stick packs in it. Anyways, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. Yeah, I opened with a plug. Suck my... I don't care. I don't care. It's a slow morning for me, personally. It's not even the morning, right? It's like 1 p.m. Fire. Well, I'm tired. Um, I got my eyes checked. I got astigmatism. Ooh. I need, I'm going to need glasses. Wait, didn't really? you get LASIK? Yeah, so it wears off. And I got it twice on my right eye because they botched it the first time. But uh, as I was described today... Your eye, just like any part of your body, the lens grows and matures. And I got LASIK at 19. And so I'm going to need to get it redone eventually. But the doctor's like, yeah, I saw you doing WWE. I saw you doing boxing. And like, there's a chance that if we do the surgery now and correct the minor little thing that you have, because my farsightedness is, is getting a little blurry. Like I'm, I'm finding myself like squinting at the airport. I look like I'm this guy at the airport. Or like Already? anywhere. Yeah. Damn. Hey, but Damn. He, and he's worried about I'm, I'm going to get punched in the eyeballs. It'll open of, up? Oh, yeah. Ooh, well, my God. Hey guys, if you're not subscribed, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Um, today is a today is a very big day, <laughs> massive day. We have a, a an array of guests that are of the utmost prestige, and I am excited to bring this one on because he is a childhood hero of mine. Rob, I, I, you're a childhood hero of mine. I I I, I uh, got an intro for you, and Dylan wrote it. So if it sucks, blame <laughs> our producer Dylan. And by the way, Dylan, this this one is like a this one's like a rate it. Rate it's like it. a six out of ten, Stop. dude. For your I, hero? Yeah, God what the blessed, fuck, dude? <laughs> you know why? Because he knows we can't replace him, bro. <laughs> I know. He, we have he no just one else. copy and pastes his articles <laughs> now. He fucking... He doesn't, dude, yesterday I called him. I was checking in. I was like, how you doing? He goes, dude, getting ready for tomorrow. I'll get in all the PDF. What the fuck yeah, are you right. actually yeah, doing? Right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, our guest today is a telev television icon who started his career as a pro skateboarder. He has since become a successful entrepreneur, investing in and mentoring young business minds. His podcast... Build with Rob is out everywhere now. Here to tell us about his journey and why ridiculous is the only thing that MTV plays. It is Rob Deerdeck. <laughs> wow. Let's Thank go. You, man, from one Ohio guy to another. Ah, oh, that wow. is Ohio. It's so Who's not from Ohio? At, at this point, yeah. Everybody that comes on the show. Yeah. Every Who else? YouTuber, Who recently? It's a lot of YouTubers. Is it? Oh, is oh. there? Why do you think so many YouTubers hail from Ohio? Is there just nothing to do there? Except Bingo. For, yeah. No, nah, but it's, it, but look, we were searching for a way out. Like mm. as you're as you're being as you're like like going through high school and going through junior high, you're like, man, what's going to be my pathway out of here? Mm. And then you're telling everybody all the things that you're gonna do, and everyone's like, not possible, it ain't gonna happen. 100%. And then as you start to like incrementally create something, then it's like still gonna have to get a job like the rest of us. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's like, wow, look at what happened. That's cool. <laughs> how how is everything? <laughs> how is everybody in California? It's funny you know, how that works, huh? Yeah, it, it's 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 fascinating. But even even when I got like my first signature shoe and started making like hundreds of thousands, I remember my uncle at Christmas, like, oh, like, you know, me showing my signature shoe. Enjoy it while it like, lasts. Yeah, it's like, I'm just going to have to get a job like the rest of us, you know? <laughs> it's funny. Because I, I, my friends, friends, by the way, still didn't believe in me. Well, I was making really shitty vines. But that's probably why. Yeah. But I tried. I, it, and, look, and, hey, no, they just <laughs> didn't think your content was good. So they're like, <laughs> they where's right. this going? Where's this going? <laughs> they were right at the time. But yeah, it was it was funny growing up in Ohio. It's like uh, I always wanted a little something more, mm -hmm. and and that's why I say you're a childhood hero of mine. Because uh, just just to dive in a little bit, uh, yeah, man, we 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 everyone from my generation watched you all growing up, and then what you've done inspired a lot of the stuff that we do now. Like Fantasy Factory alone, I think it was the impetus for so many like content houses. That was like the original content house. My brother modeled the Team Ten house. 
after the fantasy factory. We bought a warehouse because we saw the fantasy no, factory. No, look, he met with me. Like Lewis Howes introduced oh, me and yeah. him. And it was like, I'm going to be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was like, I'm going to be a billionaire. And like, I'm going to do it like this. And like, even when, when, when he bought the house, he's like, you got to come down here. I was like, bro, I'm not telling you where I'm not going. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, to the I'm, team 10 I'm not going to the team 10 house. You know what I'm saying? I'm 40, 40 years old, okay? I don't, I don't know what you guys are doing down there. Uh, but, but, but it was like, you know, you got to think, even Fantasy Factory was like a wild concept to even try to push through to television. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I didn't, there was no, content wasn't a thing. It was like, it was like we were the first comedy reality television with, with uh, Robin Big. And then it was like, okay, how do I take this to another level but use the platform to like monetize it, right? Mm. And that that's where like I was able to do all the brand deals and build all the shows around the companies that I own and now really use MTV's platform. At that point was like before like social media had really got cooking and YouTube or anything. So I was able to monetize the co my own content through their platform. Expert level leveraging. Yeah. It, it, you are so good at it. Yeah. And, and it's funny because a lot of people, not a lot, but there's a handful of people who have been in your position, given a, a platform and visibility, and then they just can't amplify or activate in a way they should to build brands other than just the thing. Yeah. Right. And you've done such a good job of that and, and, and your ability to innovate and pivot, you know, starting from Robin Big, Fantasy Factory, Ridiculousness, and then the brands and now the podcast is just like, I come, I said this yesterday on, on, on yesterday's episode, I commend anyone who's able to stay relevant popping and up to date not out of touch and, and in the know for that like decades but, but, but think about it too like i'm not trying to stay like in the know or stay relevant i just keep creating mm. and i'm creating behind a business plan mm. right based off of like the the way of life that i want to live right like ultimately it's like you you chase a certain sort of lifestyle and you want that to be sustainable and part of what fuels me is continually evolving and creating something new. And then occasionally you get caught in some weird matrix where you end up doing some random show <laughs> about clips because you like you read an article with Vinny DeBona and his $500 million syndication <laughs> business. And the next thing you know, you do like 2,000 episodes when you thought you'd do it for like, you know, you know, 50 or 60 episodes and get off MTV by 40. When I was 38 years old, I'm like, I cannot be on MTV when I'm 40. This is crazy. That's I'm the me. new Kurt Loader. That's me right now on YouTube. Look, no. I gotta get off YouTube, look, man. Look, look, and then... And you're almost 40. Hey, I am. I am. hey, look, but then I changed the perspective when it was like, okay, how do you use MTV as a platform to, to create your next chapter, which is your business? Mm. And by using the show to build and sell the production company, that was like the first company I built and sold through my Deer Dick Machine process. And then it, it gave what television meant to me a new perspective. It was like, oh, no, you can combine both worlds. And now we're talking 10 years later. You know what I'm saying? I'm 48. And I just signed a five-year deal, like to go, talking about? to go five more years. Let's you know no what way, let's go. And it's like, what are you let's talking go. about? And let me tell you this: I used to shoot sixty a year. Then I shot. Then I did. I, since I, you know, I ended up understanding the economics of the show. And keep in mind, I don't use agents or lawyers. I do, I talk directly with the dude that makes the decision at Viacom. So we negotiate on the economics of the show, okay. and which led to me reducing the cost of the show and then him picking up 168 episodes at a time instead of 30 at a time. Mm. Then they started airing more. Then it started being watched more. Then they wanted more. Then we went to shooting 252 a year, and now I'm moving to shooting 336 what? a year. What? Z zoom in on my phone right here. Look at it. <clears throat> it's, it is the most insane thing. Look I've at seen. it. MTV's play schedule. The orange is ridiculousness. That is, that is, it, it's, cl it's, it's got absurd. to cl clearly it's be an example of supply and demand though, right? Like clearly people are hungry for this content. Every gas station I stop at, every pub that I go to, every water park bathroom that I go into, <laughs> there is one program <laughs> playing and it is ridiculousness. Yeah. Always. Yeah. What the fuck is it <laughs> yeah. about that show that people is it, I'm going to can I guess? Do you mind if I guess yeah. what it is? Cuz you know in your spirit. I believe that we have moved to a culture of clip consumption. Yeah. Fast acting, quick hitting, short attention span clips. Your show was TikTok before TikTok. 
an wow. algorithm of clips that garnered people's attention for short periods of time with a little bit of conversation and a little bit of questioning and laughing about it and then on to the next one. You were this before that existed. And Is that right? And you're lovable. Yay. Do you, are you work, <laughs> do you work for the government? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But check it out, though. Think about it. Like, you're, you're, you're right, but think about it one step wider where that is the way that everybody consumes content in their regular lives. Or they binge high-end programming and Netflix and the streamers. It found this sweet spot right in the middle where you didn't want to scroll. You scrolled through your, 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 your Instagram and your social as much as you could. You've watched everything on, on those streamers. Can I just sit and do something that takes no effort or energy <laughs> to laugh at for hours at a time? Like, it's the in-between. That's what happened. Entire cable flattened out. And, like, people no longer watch cable. They want cure, their own curation of the content that they watch. And this is this easy thing that if you're six or 60, you can watch, right? And that's what allowed it to take this almost like second like wave, you know, 10 years in because the way people consume content completely changed and where they did. And this is basically this super easy to do, seamless way of watching linear cable. You know what I mean? You know what else is funny about it too? <clears throat> you guys, uh, because of the personalities on the show, provide not only the content that would be consumed on a TikTok or Twitter feed, but also the comments that yeah. would sit below them. You guys are the comments. You, Chanel, he, everybody. He, he's, he, you are the original reaction channel. Yeah. Like, like I, that is absurd to me. Like, reaction channels on YouTube, I don't know if you know this now, yeah. but they're huge. They're huge. Massive. Yeah. Massive. And, 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 and you and a few other people around that time were, like, the original, like, hey, this format works. Yeah. And, and this is interesting, too. Did you, do you own the IP of ridiculousness? No, no. Okay, but I've, why, why not? I'm well, curious. I'll tell you. So, so you know, originally, man, like when I when I when I read the Vinny DeBona article, it was like, okay, we got to get this to to syndication and get into the syndication business, right? So then we pitch it to all the networks first. Nobody would have it, and and ultimately, uh, when you do a show with MTV, you end up now, um, like they own the IP. You're just talent. Interesting. So, so this is with all all cable, right? There so was no, there's no wiggle wiggle room. Out there's there? there's no wiggle room, but if you're creative, you can figure out ways to further maximize it, right? Mm. So really, what I did was then I ultimately built a business around producing it, mm. right? So then now, and keep in mind, I built and sold that business for 190 million, right? So it's like that is the scale of what I built inside that. Uh, and then the the you you basically capture the margin by editing it, by finishing it, by the music. Then we built our own clip library, to where like then we have all the licensed clips that are that we monetize in their own show. So you built all of these uh, different sort of revenue streams in it, and then continued to grow the talent side. You know, but at the end of the day, like. Unless like MTV wants to take that IP and monetize it beyond their own channels, which they never it's will. It's never going to sell. Yeah, so you're not really. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's, it's not like there is some crazy amount of money because they would have never put it on television if I would have owned the IP. Uh, so at the end of the day, marginal. I believe I maxed yep. the amount of money and effort. Because keep in mind, you know, shooting 252 episodes of television a year is only four percent of my time. Right. Like it's it's a very <laughs> limited amount of time and energy. It's an hour and a half of prep the night before and then five hours to shoot the five or the six shows each day. Because it's automated. You censor with the network. A lot of the production is automated, the, the pre-planning, oh. all that stuff. But if you had owned the IP, you would be responsible for all of that. Shit. No, no. You got to keep in mind, I automated it all. Okay. How they deliver me shows, how the writers, I grade every show zero to ten to weed out weak writers and to make shows better. Because the better the shows are, the quicker they are to prep, the easier they are to shoot, right? I track the time of every shoot to, like, to, to try to manage keeping the shoot time between, like, 27 and 32 minutes to keep my days down to five hours so that it ends up being this effortless, high-paced, high high-output high high for me, but a little bit of energy and time, right? And then I wear the same outfit. <laughs> 
So I'm like stuck in time. You know what I'm saying? It could be Rob from Robin Big or it could be the 50 year old. We don't know. It's the same outfit. It's like one care. I'm not building a brand with ridiculousness. I'm like trapped in a box that I'm ne- that that's it's always going to look the same. It's whether it's infinite it was, Rob. That's it. This podcast is brought to you by Cash App. When your personal finance connects you to both your funds and the stuff that matters, that's money. money. And that's Cash App. You know what else is money? Going out to <laughs> eat your dinner with your friends. Me, Logan, Manager Jeff, David, we all went to a nice supper the other night at a place called Nobu and Malibu. It was beautiful. We had every course, sashimi, sushi, tuna, steak, tacos, everything. The bill came at the end of the night. It was a lot of money. It's an expensive place. It was like 1600 bucks. And I said, well, there's five of us here at the table. Let's split it five ways. Oh, sorry. We can only use two cards. Well, that's not as much of a problem for us because we have Cash App. And so one of us paid for it and the rest of us just Cash App that one person. I was the person. My Cash App is Mike May. Like, I have a cash tag on <laughs> okay, it. Okay, we, we, we get it. Um, but you guys should get it too. <laughs> Download Cash App. It's the app for sending, spending, saving, investing, splitting, tipping, donating, gifting, or just typing numbers all with the number one finance app in the App Store. Basically, what I'm saying is that's money and that's Cash App. Download Cash App from the App Store or Google Play Store today to create your own Cash tag. We love you, Cash App. I, I was I was on an episode. Thanks for having me on, by the way. Awesome. Um, and and I hear you about the prep because they sent me the clips and I uh, was able to watch them and come up with some jokes myself with the little help of the writers. And really, they you guys went talk through jokes. That's how it works. Well, how do you prep when you prep for your, the show? I just watch it and move it all around, and then you're I just, not you're not like storing stuff in the back. You're, you're I coming. mean, I kind of store it, but I freestyle it straight really? through. I didn't know that they actually showed. You just got that. somebody fired. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Man <laughs> these guys are sitting with you in a room, like okay. When then, when Rob will probably say like wah wah wah, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you hit him with a. <laughs> Oh, and that's funny because now that I think about it, you were hitting some zingers. I'm like, man, this guy's yeah, got some zingers. You discredited it all. <laughs> Yo, everything just clicked with him. He goes, dude, what? No, it makes <laughs> sense. Man, this guy's pretty funny. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> but but you must love it because, I, again, I use the word format. And we all know the power of a really good format, right? Like yeah. like Jeopardy, Deal or No Deal, every Impulsive. game show you've ever seen. Impulsive, format, format, format. Yeah. But you've, cre- you've created a format. But why you don't have to be up there, do you? You could get pretty much any comedian to to do it. Or is it something that you love? Or do you feel that ridiculous is simply not the same with Rob Deerdeck on that stage? No, I mean, obviously, you know, because we did the other pilots and the other shows. You know, you what remember I'm that? Yeah, yeah. I remember Damn, like, man, bro. I remember this guy fucking Damn. sweated his way out yes. before he could get on. Yes, <laughs> bro. Yes. Yes. Like, you know I needed a reset. <laughs> man. A re-sweat. Yeah, man. Bro. Bro. Do you, do you, I always thought that was fascinating. I'm like, oh man, what an interesting thing to have to deal with. You know what I'm saying? I was sweaty like, here, yeah, bro. you just get it happened just his get, first episode of this yeah. show as well. Yeah. I, it's a nerve. Sweaty thing. walked yeah, off. I think it was, yeah, I think it was the drug use. Explain what you're talking about. Just so so we were uh, piloted by MTV to try to create a spinoff. What do you mean we? Okay. Jake Paul as, <laughs> as Rob Dyrdek. <laughs> to bring it full circle. Jake Paul as Rob Dyrdek. Yeah. <laughs> Tana Monjow as fucking Chanel. And then me, and then it was like a rotating like uh, yeah. th- we were trying out like a bunch of different people. For it was called episodes. Bustedness. And it was called Bustedness. And, you know, Jake did a great job. They had me in all this, like, culturally relevant clothing. Mm. I was wearing, like, Volcom and, like, mm. shit that I have. Mm. I was like, dude, I felt great, but I was so hot, dude. Yeah. And there were so <laughs> many people in the audience. And I swear to God, they were all looking at just me, bro. Or at least it felt that way. Yeah. Oh, like, that was, oh, that was pre-pandemic. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. But then, you know. We, we shot a couple decent episodes, but I think they were just like, yo, this chemistry is whack. Like, it has to be yeah. wrong. Is that why they canned it? By the no, way? They, they, it did they, not get picked they, up. They, you know, I think, I think what it is, is, and this is what I tried to, like, push on them as they were making these, you know, was, like, what makes the show work to, to your comment culture, you know, like, it's, like, it feels like three friends just, like, talking about what they're seeing. And what happens is a lot of times, like, you feel the pressure to try to be on. Right. So instead of it being natural and flowing and really being more like like observing and and talking funny about you end up trying to like hit zingers and make moments. And I just think like that's where a lot of them because they shot a lot and a lot of them didn't make it. Some of them did, you know, like different depending on what the cast was. But obviously none of them quite perform 
at the same level, but they still work. So yeah. they just keep trying all different types of them. Because they go to <clears throat> they go to viewing, right? Like they probably yeah. get like beta tests or something. Oh, no, they put like them that. on the air. They put yours oh, on. Oh, that's air. right. Yeah. What the fuck am I talking about? Yeah. Anyways, they probably get like some sort of QC or somebody has <sighs> feedback on Nielsen. I don't know exactly how it gets done, right? But to your point, if you had put me, George, and Logan as the hundred percent game over, hundred percent. But also. But That's they wouldn't the do that because they, they would also be like, well, we got to have the group. We got to yeah, have yeah, this. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? This prime bottle is going to space and one of you are going to space with it. That is right. I've teamed up with Whatnot, a live auction platform that I actually invested in to get a blue origin ticket and send one of you to space with a signed prime bottle by me and KSI. All you have to do is download Whatnot and enter the competition before 1128 for this trip of a lifetime. Trust me, you're going to have fun and you're going to go to space. Download Whatnot, enter the competition, and we'll see you guys in the sky. Again, you know, when I think about what the show means to me as it relates to, you know, and, and why do I continue to do it? It's like because I make a significant amount of money for a very little bit of effort. And to yeah. the to the point, it's it's like a weird like improv art form for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like improv I just go fun. and like freestyle the like I'm like it for 30 minutes and it's like, oh, you just did a flawless show where you just made everything up. You know what I mean? It's like it's really just sort of this fun fast paced experience but make no mistake <laughs> make no mistake it is only for the money you know what i'm saying i mean there ain't even uh, man there is no like that's why george says know, he comes here every day you know that's what I mean? it. That, hey you think i'm actually friends with you schmuck hey hey then, then invest dad, well my invest dad, well that's well brother <laughs> enjoy well last brother I, I, i'm dying to ask man because i'm sitting here and i'm just blown away by your mindset dude like yeah uh, Logan always whispers in my ear, steal like an artist as mm -hmm. he's scrolling and trying to identity <laughs> theft all the new creators coming into existence. Mm -hmm. And then Mike <laughs> sucking onto whatever Logan's doing. So <laughs> my question to you is, whose nipple were you trying to suck off of while you were like growing? Like, who are you looking up to and being like, this is a great uh, uh, structure. I'm going to take it and go this direction. Who was your like uh, hero? God, you know, it's like, I don't know. I don't know, like, like who I could point to that's ever done, done it the way that I've done it. Right. It's almost like because, you know, <laughs> and, and again, not not from a, a flex as much as I mean, I guess you could say. Bob uh, Saget. Yeah, Bob Saget. You only, know what I'm saying? Well, like, the only one. You know what I mean? Like, sure. and, and think about that. But but even even for that, make no mistake about that, even though I got hammered for like it because the show came out after Tasha's show came yeah. out, even though we shot it before. But. I read an article with Vinny DeBona in the five hundred and five hundred million dollar syndication business, and and then was like, I'm going to make the faster, cooler version of this for MTV. Mm. So it was definitely like that as it relates to, you know, looking at a market, looking at a sleepy market. How can you reinvent the space and capitalize on something that had the same amount of success? You know, and I, I recently was in a America's Funniest Home uh, Home Videos documentary, and they asked me if I could, it was me talking about getting the idea from oh, cool. Vin DeBona, and they were like, hey, will you sign off on this clip for this 30 years of America's Funniest Home Videos? And I'm like, only if I can come meet Vin and get a photo. And yeah, so yeah. it's like, I went to meet Vin, and Vin is, you know, like 75, slick back, gray hair, dressed to the <laughs> nines. You walk into his America's Funniest Home Videos office, it's like a time capsule. It was like 80 success carried straight through into like 2019, you know? And, and like, when I explained to him how many shows I was shooting and what it was, he's like, what? No way. You know, because they shoot like 30 a year, whatever yeah. it is, you know what I mean? And, and again, you know. He was pissed. <laughs> You know, but he was. He was like, man, we tried all these cable ones that never worked. Like, Take why your does this fucking one... picture. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> and, and, and boy, I'll keep that thing forever. It's precious. But to the point of like what you're modeling after, I always looked at everything through the business lens. So I was always looking at like, how do I maximize this opportunity, whether it was the Fantasy Factory platform, even, even during Robin Big Days, you have to understand that I saw what BAM was doing in board sales and shoe sales. I renegotiated all my royalty deals for my shoes and for my boards before I got on, before Robin Big happened. And then you got to think, I was getting paid uh, 6000 a month as a Red Bull athlete in the first season of Robin Big. And I got um, $1.2 a year from Monster the following season <laughs> to put a Monster <laughs> fridge in Robin Big. And then I'm like, okay... 
how do I how do I further this even further yeah. and maximize this? And that's what led to creating creating Fantasy Factory as the concept around the, having the brands that I could now do brand deals. You got to think I did Chevy deals, Microsoft deals, Carl's Jr. deals. I just did all these mega deals and integrated it into that show. So I was making millions. We then, in the future. then I was like making millions off of all my product and board sales and all of that stuff like by seeing it through a business lens ahead of time and how could I maximize it. And, and I just think that I continue to look at everything I do through this lens of what are all the ways that you can create value. And now in this day and age, now it's like building and selling companies. How do I, how do I build and, and create big liquidity events is, is really where that, that passion has evolved from as I look through things from a business line of what I'm doing with sort of my content on the business side and where I'm taking it long term, you know. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask one last thing on the business side because I'm I'm sure we'll <clears throat> pivot because I want to talk about skateboarding a little bit too. But um, how did it work? Because now, as you can tell, platforms that are owned by or um, not platforms, but channels that are owned by creators <clears throat> obviously are used to propel prime businesses, up. right? Like <laughs> prime now. Prime up. You can use that as a clip. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> prime now. Prime up. Prime now. Uh, <laughs> but like, but like, that has become. We we have uh, as internet creators have gone through a very similar evolution where yep. it went from merch, then big brand deals, now IP building and exits. Right. You're seeing this the kind of a very similar evolution that we saw on the uh, platforms of earlier day. My question to you is: How does MTV treat? a talent who does not own IP, does not own network, does not own platform in your ability to promote own products that they do not own a piece of that intellectual property. It doesn't happen anymore. It's over. I was the last one to do it with Fantasy Factory. <laughs> they, I want, couldn't, they want a piece of... Well, they would... They just, yeah, they, they want a piece. Or it just would never happen. Right. It would become a nightmare. You know, I transitioned a little bit. The first season of Ridiculousness, I did a deal with Microsoft and and bing their their search search engine. search engine and at the end of the episode we would search a thing and a video would come up and play it so i was that was the only time but it became so complicated in that format rather than creating content around the brand idea but again look the the there's a lot of want hoping and wishing that like you'll take sweat equity and have a partnership and put all this energy and time and effort into prime of like we're gonna get the billion dollar exit and it's like what that actually takes and the odds of that actually occurring, the complexities of, of, of you know, ready to drink distribution and like ultimately sell through like your media and platform can drive it into the stores. But you literally have like, you know, a few months to, to hit a percentage of sell through in order to even have it in there. There's so many different beauty brands and all these different things. So many people that have tried different things. But it's, it still takes sort of that art, science, and magic and timing of things for to sure. happen for, like, there to actually be that event. And my, what I'm trying to master is eliminating all of the X factors and, and getting more consistent of building things that have a better chance of being acquired and then investing deep in the stages and the capital along the way so when it does get acquired, I get a significant amount of liquidity so that I'm really looking at like everything, like how can I, how can I sell, you know, something for, you know, 200 million instead of 500 million and own 70% of it, mm. right? Because the, the, in the, in that game, you know, there's, you know, a thousand people that'll buy a company for a hundred million. There's like, you know, 700 that'll buy it for 200 million. And then like 250 and beyond, there's like five yeah right, right, you know yeah, what i mean right, right. so it's like either pepsi's buying it or like you know a private equity maybe but it's only if like it's like this yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so are you yeah. doing are you doing that through another business question damn it are you doing that through more efficient funding on the front side and then maximizing certain verticals and channels of marketing distribution are, have you basically in your mind created a secret sauce of how to as you said eliminate those x factors yeah, it, yes, but it, it starts with the idea, the market, um, the white space. Like, is it innovative enough um, to take market share, but not too innovative that you, you this consumer doesn't can't won't figure it out in time? And then it boils down to who's operating the business. I'm not going to operate the business. So the curation of the individual or the operators, Jockeys. their their skill set 
is ultimately, you got to think I co-find everything and fund it through all the early stages so that I already have the common co-founder stock. Then I now have all the preferred Perfect. stock in the beginning so that I gobble up the most equity that you can get at the very beginning of a of, of venture and then hope to get it to the next level of getting those bigger rounds that creates more net worth and value in me that's worth nothing until it becomes liquid. You know what I mean? I think, I think life is... Uh, a lot about winning more than you lose, right? Yep. Winning, winning is great. I do think losing, in some ways, is great too. You can you can learn a lot, and I've I've imagined you've that had a lot think. of ups up up. What say it again? Something about boxing came to my attention when you thought about oh, this. Man. <laughs> I'm just saying it's part of your legacy, bro. Like it's not like. Listen it. to me. Listen to me. Yeah. Before, before I'm not even gonna let him address okay, that. Okay, I'm so sorry. This man, last time I saw him. He was like, we was like, maybe, maybe this Floyd thing might happen. This man fought Floyd Mayweather. Oh, that, you know was, that was right. Yeah, it was right before. Then he's like, now it's like, like, I, I want you to know I wrestled. Yeah, but now he's fighting dead himself. So listen to me, I, I, I oh, wrestled dude. at WrestleMania, okay, with Rowdy Roddy Piper. You did? And I yes. flew off of a skateboard as my finishing <laughs> move over the ring and then slammed the guy down and went. Only I wasn't big enough to make it to the main stage. I was in like the fan stage in the back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I never got to feel the glory of the 90,000 people. You know what I'm saying? Like I was in like the, the small, like there was like, no, I'm like, there was like 150 people. Like, oh, is that Rowdy Roddy Piper? Is that Rob Deerdeck? No, it's Kid Lightning. You know what I mean? No, like, it's Kid Lightning. You know what I'm saying? With my wrestling name. Was that the first time you jumped out of the box that you put yourself in? For what? <laughs> Ridiculous in this yeah, box. The yeah, oh, well, yeah, no, no, that was Pete. That was pre, 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 oh, pre inside the box. Yeah, we know it was during Fantasy Factory. You know, yeah, we did Rowdy, that. Rowdy, for, what for year? That. I feel almost like this has been such a long span yeah. that we almost need to like describe a year that this was all happening. And can we go back even one more slot? Wait, 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 wait. No, I, I, sorry, I, sorry. I, I do want to ask because I'm curious. Uh, again, winning more than you lose. If you're doing that, you're winning in life. Yep. Have you found that you are learning and your hit rate has increased with what you're doing with your money and your energy over the years? Yeah, but look, I've it's a it's I'm gonna take you deep because it's like like my personal mastery is like controlling my evolution and guiding my evolution on all aspects of my life. Okay. And that's health, wealth you know, life, work, it's mastering time, energy, and clarity, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm continually optimizing and maximizing my time, grading my energy of how my time feels mm -hmm. when I'm there, and then continually, like, predicting the future off of getting better and better at designing goals and paths forward that's all expanding me into the ideal version of myself. I continually, it perpetually evolve into this limitless potential. So year over year over year, I just keep getting better and better in all aspects of life. And you still feel that way? Oh, it's like, it, now I can see 15 years out and oh, how cool. much better, at 48, I know like how I'm gonna be in peak shape and the best shape and health of my life at like 55. And that's when I'm gonna ease back from doing content and, and, and pushing as hard to build and savor more and okay. travel more, spend more time with my kids, even though you got to think I still shoot all these episodes, all these businesses, all of it is still about 20% of my time because I'll still, you know, I still, you know, to give you context, if you spend an hour a day, that's about 4% of your time, right? And so for me, you know, I still spend, you know, two, three hours every day to take my kids to school, you know, still be with my kids, spend all the time with my wife. Like, it's still about how do you live a really happy, harmonious, beautiful existence while continuing to uh, fulfill your desire to create and build businesses yeah. and wealth and all these things. Right? And, the, and, and and over time, you feel that uh, continually contributing to the betterment of yourself. Right, because you're getting better and better and better mm. at living. Mm. You understand? Like, so you're just, you're mastering yourself, you're disciplined, you're more consistent, you're healthier, right? And then how do I know that? Well, I grade how I feel about my life every single day and then have the data for years, right? Like I track all of, did I get up at five? Did I brain train? Did I meditate? Did I get in the gym? You did will I eat rate clean? your day? Yeah, I rate my day, I rate how I feel about my life, work, and health, zero to 10. So I could show you how much more disciplined I am, how much healthier I am, how much like happier I am in qualitative numbers that I've collected over <laughs> the years. That is so I interesting. But, I, I, but, but then I could show you how I used my time for the last like three, four You're years. You're so analytical. Then I could show you how I've grown my wealth, 
right? Like in, in how I've grown all the companies where it's just this entire life, if you will, was designed and then lived with purpose and intent, which gives you what? This incredible feeling of fulfillment and like happiness and gratitude of like, look at this amazing life that I created a vision for and grew into continually. You're a weak, and weak, you can do it too. <laughs> and you can do it too. Go to robderdick.com and download the app. <laughs> He's a self no, 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 no. Do, no, no, no. do you do mentorship? Do you like I'm, teach I'm not, people I'm not how gonna to do, do I'm not going to do mentorship, but it's a philosophy that I believe that I can teach to other people and really like I'm going to build a software that anybody can can build their own version of it and build this sort of harmony in life and and basically find balance in their health, wealth, life and work. Can I can I ask a question? Yeah. I, I got one right after okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. Th this cuz this this started me on an interesting train of thought. I too am super analytical. Mm -hmm. I love data. We love data. We know the importance and significance of data. You can you could do so much with with the data. But I am afraid to rate my own life yep. like you are doing. And I've, I've seen this on your um, Instagram before. You're talking about how you're going to rate the day and see how you can improve. But truthfully, and this is funny because I'm not afraid to fail or fall short per se, but I'm afraid to give a rating to my day because I don't want to see the, the, the days that are fours yeah. on paper. I don't want to see Those the, are the most it, important. I know, but like it's, it's, it, it, I think the, the, but, but ch the challenge out, of having out. to beat the day I just did is like too stressful but, but, for me but, to but, think but about. That's yeah. not what you're doing. You're living life. And then when you're down, it's, you know, I call it qualitative awareness because when you just ask yourself how I feel about it and rate it zero to 10, and to me, it's like five, you're neutral, six and above, you're, you're half full, you're hopeful, four and below, you're half empty. And, and when you're half empty, you're like, why did I even wrestle? Yeah. I don't even like wrestling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what am I even doing? Why am I even traveling and doing this show? Like, when you're empty, like, and you can pick apart anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, as I began to see that, what, what really became clear to me, I, I'm just trying to optimize and evolve over time. Because you're, when you ask yourself it, you, and you take a note of it, a lot of times it ends up being the same thing. And so, it, it's not like, it seems like it's all of these things. But it's really four or five key things that keep bringing you down mm. that when it becomes so obvious, that's what I need to change. Mm. And then when you begin to change that now over time, because I went from a place because because this is kind of how the flow worked. I started doing it in 2014 and it wasn't until 2020 did I collect the data for the whole year. Because when I would really, when I would be really low, then I don't want to collect it. the data, right? Like so, then you go on these big dark periods. Okay, then you then you're back on, and you get and, and eventually they got less and less to then. And what really what changed me in 2020 specifically is somebody heard me talk about it in an interview, and and they they emailed me and said, hey, I could write a script for the way because I just keep all the stuff in my Google Calendar, and they they wrote a script for me to pull it out and put it in dashboards. So oh, now damn. it gamified it. Now Ooh, I'm looking at like seeing my numbers and be like, and then it was so clear that like when I don't drink, eat clean, get up at five, meditate, get in the gym, brain train, like, like that my quality of life is higher. It became so obvious. So it changed the way wow. that I began to approach health okay. and the importance of it. It's brilliant. But to be honest with you, I am afraid of having to get up at 5 a.m of having to eat right every day. Yeah. I'm afraid of the reality that I know is right. It's there. Look, listen, but sure. I don't want to confront listen, it. Sure. Listen to me. You shouldn't no, confront sure. it and you shouldn't want to do this. <laughs> okay. But this, I want to be successful. No, no, no. This is some old man shit. Oh God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is like, it's at 28, 29, yeah. you know, you're 29 or 28. 27. Oh, Jesus. What's going on? No, you know what I'm I, saying? Yeah. You don't even, you don't, hey. Just keep eating fucking Taco Bell. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you don't get up. You sleep in. I'm right. Hey, asleep. I show up here early. You show up here Rob late. Rob, dude, eight <laughs> minutes early. I'm one minute late to my own podcast. While, while being ridiculously successful, I know people that should be 20 minutes early and they're late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my question is this. Uh, first of all, the, the you've literally changed my whole perception of life. Like, I, I actually want to go home and try this. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. amazing. But, but, but it, here's the output. Pure happiness. Yeah, it's just so happiness. It's worth it. That's yeah. it. So it's worth it. This is saying. why you That's should it. do it. Input That's output. It. Input That's output. It. It's like, what are you really trying to do in life? You I, know, what, you know where happiness is found? Getting up every day and being filled with energy, excited about everything you're doing. 
That's really what yeah. it ends. And what you're doing today is based off of every decision you made in the past. This experience, the reason, if you ran all around and things are crazy and out of control because you made the decision, we're going to take the show on the road. Somebody find a place. We got to get mm. it. Like if there's chaos involved in it, you can look back on everything, on whatever feeling you have that day to every, all the decisions you made in the past. So you have to get better and better at making decisions that create a better future, future present. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so, yeah, go, George, sorry. Uh, sorry I, George. I, no, 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 please, dude. I love everything you're saying. I'm, I'm literally, I might look like I'm zoning out. It's generally because I'm like, how do I adjust to do this? Like, I'm actually very excited about this. The reason I'm, I know for a fact it works, well, one, you're, you're a huge example. And then two, uh, not what you did exactly, but when I was very young, uh, my mom never pushed religion on me. Mm -hmm. But she said, why don't you journal how you feel the days you start with God versus the days you don't? Mm -hmm. Like meditation. Mm -hmm. And that's how I Oof. built my own relationship with God because I was like, whoa, this actually like really significantly helped. Um, your meditation at five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing you don't smoke or drink because like this is how do you – because I like – I can't go to sleep because I'm an insomniac. Yeah. But the only thing that could put me out is – is smoking weed. And this has been going back and forth with me because the next day I feel groggy How or not motivated. How I'm 29. I look like I'm 49 because of the beer, but I'm, I'm 29. No, you just, you smell like pot. Do I smell like no, pot? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. I got so nervous. I got so nervous oh, right now. Oh man, oh, I just took it out. Just took it out. Dude, you weren't even <laughs> looking at me. So I was like, dude, he doesn't even want his nose to be directed okay. at me. All right, all right, look, look, to, to that point, that's a beautiful guy. God bless your mother. You know what I mean? And and again, it's just it's it's self-reflecting in in what it is. But I, when I was your age, I smoked weed to go to sleep. I drank every night. You know what I mean? It's like I I eventually be got to a place where where like if I like eat the wrong thing at the wrong time, it will affect my sleep. You know, it'll affect, and I track it like through the numbers so I can see what it is. I track you become so optimized and you become it, you fall in love with the feeling of feeling amazing all the time that you know when you know I just went to Cabo and you know I, it took me five days to recover. And and I had to fight through, like, for as optimized as I am, just drinking, you know, four days in a row, put my mind into this place of questioning all these things. I had to keep telling myself, wait till uh, you get through the weekend. When you get back in your rhythm, don't make any decisions this week. I was being short wow. with the people that worked with me. Like, like I had the awareness of, like, hey, if you're going to, like, go on vacation, and normally I create, like, literally a recovery period after vacation, uh, so I don't make any bad decisions or whatever it may be. But that's like when you get to this level of like optimization, it, it just becomes much more nuanced as in in what the output is in your quality of life. And it's like, you think how we look at Tom Brady of like, oh, this is insane. This guy's so committed. Like it's so much discipline and like, but getting to like that level of discipline and optimization in all aspects of my life, I realized like, oh, you're not, it's, it goes from, you know, you create systems, you get super consistent, they become habits, those habits become simply a way of life and intuitively how you operate. I'm not trying to be disciplined. Uh, I just am because of the systems and the way that I built my life. And how you long know? you've done it for. I think that's the most important right. message. It's the, it's to the, the people. time. How did you yeah. miss? Because people are going to see you Talking about look, they've already turned it off. Checking. They've no, they already haven't. turned it off. No, they haven't. Trust me. <laughs> Listen to me. Our audience they've is already super turned it off. Rob. <laughs> Listen to me. There, but some of them will see you and you're like, okay, every day I wake up 5 a.m. I meditate. Yeah. Check boxes, data, Excel sheets, walking computer. I am a, 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 a cyborg. I, I bet you got a stand up desk. R right. I don't. I don't. I don't. But don't see I do got a digital whiteboard. A, tre a treadmill stand up desk and a digital I, whiteboard. I, I do a have a digital whiteboard. A digital whiteboard. Dude, you have everything. Okay. Rob Deer that guy. Look, dang it. we are getting you're you're just at the tip of the iceberg. My God. <laughs> it goes deeper than <laughs> the rest is beneath the, the water. But they'll all see this and they'll be like, fuck that shit. Yeah. I'm going to get a drink. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because yeah. the idea of that ultra efficient, optimized cyborg human is a turn off to them because it's unrealistic. But when you turn to the camera and you say, Yo, I started with day one with one five sentence journal entry. Yeah. They can relate to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that became a habit. But, that, but, you know what I'm saying? But this is why my mission is, like, I know I wasn't like this five years ago, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, I discovered this in the process of failure, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I initially, you know, to, to give you even the context, like, I, 
I, I basically just did a million different things. I would just go high and low, boom and bust, boom and bust. What's the next big thing? I got Wild Grinders on Nickelodeon. I got Fantasy Factory, Ridiculousness, Professional Skateboarding League, all these companies mm. I got. It's like one of these is going to be the big winner for me that then I'll find happiness. Then I'll find balance. Then I'll be in a steady relationship and all these things, right? That's how I approach life. And then in the middle of all that chaos, you know, I was raising money for... Uh, my professional skateboarding league at the time, which I, I I didn't even know what an investment baker was. I didn't even know what venture capital was in 2013. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I, when they said, hey, th- your league's worth $30 million. I'm like, we did 7 million in revenue. How is that, possible? How is that yeah. even possible? I didn't even know multiples. I didn't even know how any of it worked. And when I went out and pitched my league, like everybody, like I would pitch my league after I pitched myself of like, here, I, you know, I have all these companies, these integrated, this fully integrated multi-platform universe of brands and media of cartoons and skateboard leagues and yeah. foundation with skate parks and multiple shows on MTV, all these things. Like, and so they were like, well, can we, let's have a deal with everything you do. And so they, uh, one of the big investment groups out here, the rain group, like offered me like basically a 360 deal. We're like, hey, we will value you. At the time, it was like they would value me at 100 million and that they were going to give me 50 million for half of everything I did forever. And then I was going to get, um, I would get 30 million off the top and 20 million into the company, right? And at the time, you know, I want to say, you know, yeah, I was probably making like 10 or 12 million at the time, right? And it was- Annually? Yeah. And then I was like, Finally, finally, mm. man, these really smart business people see it in me. Mm. The, these guys see it. I'm meant to be a billionaire. They're the ones to get me there. Finally, all my chaos and highs and lows and sandy, like, like, finally, the smart guys recognize the potential in this guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Time to take me to, yeah. let's go to the Billy Club. How do you get to the Bill Club, guys? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's really where my mind was. Because you got to think, I'm uneducated. I quit high school. I don't understand money. I'm just like, I will things into existence. I fantasize about what a great business it would be. And then when it's like, I spent all that time and lost a couple million dollars, like, oh, fuck, well, okay, well, I guess that didn't work, right? Like, I didn't understand it. But when they did the diligence on me and stripped away, because they had to look at all my personal finances, how I managed my money, all the, the every company I had and everything, they were like, you're uninvestable. We will loan you $7 million to figure out like how to make a business out of you. You have to go on a salary of 700 grand a year. And, you know, at the time, I'm like, what? And, and then pay us back of this $7 million at a 10% interest. And then if we can't figure out how to build a business around you, then we get to keep this equity from uh, equity percentage of you for life. Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, it was the most nah. devastating. It went from, what's up? We going to the Billy Club? <laughs> you know, what are we doing? To just like, you are, and then at that moment. You go to the strip club. Yeah, you want to know what I was at that point? <laughs> like, you're not the business person you think you are. You're not the like, like, you're, you don't even like, what do you even like about any of this, right? Mm. Like, is it just, you're just going to keep creating more and like, try to find the answers? Like, that's when I was really at like, like, you, you can't live like this. And I said to them, like, I'm going to come back to you. And when I come back to you, I'm going to have the plan figured out. And then then when I get asked for the money, I'm going to know exactly what the money will be used for and what we're going to grow. I'm going to figure this out on my own. And it started this journey that just led to hiring all these people, these different books and different consultants that began to shape my entire way of creating not just how I wanted to build businesses and create value from a venture perspective, but what type of life did I want? Then I designed that life and began to live it. And then at the end, the people that bought my production company for $190 million and were the same group that offered to give me the $7 million loan. <laughs> that's that's the, how crazy the poetic justice is. Oh, betting wow. on yourself and then forget about they would have owned half of you and you would have just got 30 million and you know instead like you bet on yourself and that's where the magic side is where once i built the harmony in my my existence and began to like build systems for everything and look at life 
of you know setting goals in all aspects of life, then I began to create this extraordinary energy and I kept evolving and growing and learning and growing and learning and my whole world grew into the state that I am today, which is like, you're like, what? Like, I'll be like looking at my shower and be like, you're so lucky. Like, I'll be driving, like pulling out of the, just take my kids to school, be like, look at this life you have. Like, this is crazy. Like, you don't practice gratitude. You're overwhelmed by it. Mm. And then like, you just continually attract abundance. It's just nonstop, bigger, more fulfilling things that tie back to what ultimately creates that harmony, peace, and happiness within you is what attracts to you now. You know For what I mean? For sure. I, leading with gratitude. But you got to design it. Yeah. Yep. To get there. But you can't design it at 27. You got to become 37 <laughs> and fucking hit rock bottom. <laughs> I did both of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I Mike, I it's time. Which way's the it's Billy time. Club? It's which <laughs> way's the Billy Club? <laughs> Uh, it's so real dude you are fucking elevated Rob Deerdick yeah you yeah. are literally ele- like super elevated yeah I thought we were gonna talk about skin no, I don't know if you follow him on Instagram but this this is this is what it's about god dang bro no wonder you didn't pick up busting this holy shit we are, <laughs> we are fucking morons look, look that was busting uh, hey. That's up, hey, that's up to the network, you know. God, dang. Can we, now can we talk about skateboarding? <laughs> I I, so I wanted to ask to one thing because because we're, we're talk, kind of talking about yeah, business and it. money. We'll get we'll get into yeah. it, but um, you know, you love what you do, and similarly to me, money is a awesome byproduct of just do, I am blessed to say I say this with privilege. I I get to do what I love every day, and it's fucking awesome. Um, but is is there is there a a level where you can pat yourself on the back and say, you know, I, this isn't so much about just making the money anymore. You know, it, 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 I have all the things I want. Mm-hmm. Or, or is it your way of keeping tally? It's a scoreboard and you want to win. You know, it's, it's, it's relative, right? Because it's, you've got to understand what do you want money for, right? And then, you know, usually it's like a way of life and, oh, it's freedom and it's these things. Well, okay, well, how, what is that and how does that work? And then, like... Like getting to that, then then it's your identity. Mm-hmm. I need to fly private everywhere. I need to have Ferraris. I need to live in a thirty million dollar house. Like these are all things that like, like I've built within my identity that I needed to set as sort of the milestones. But but then I wanted to create a simple way of like how did I m- make money and keep score right? Because at the end of the day, you still want to invest your money and see a return on the money you invest like and you want to earn money and and money ends up being this really you know I'm I'm as you evolve and change like your desires your wants and needs evolve and change right and and for me it's like how I help my family what I do with my foundation like but at the end of the day as it relates to to what it is I set these goals and achieve these goals and continually push these goals, but I'm looking at it at this matrix of like, okay, earned income is taxed at 50%. It's, it's long-term capital gains is 35. It's like, okay, I, you know, risk a high risk venture where I'm looking to get these huge multiples on, on the businesses that I create because it's part of my passion. So then to balance that out, I only invest in cash flowing real estate, right? So then it's fully tax efficient and I have no, uh, I don't have to put any effort in it. I use it through syndication. Uh, I use syndicators and great operators. So that just generates the cash. And then the balance and the harmony in my life is like those buildings pay for my way of life. Passive. Right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't, the fully tax efficient passive income le- leaves me spiritually set for life. Mm, right? I so that. I don't ever have to even think about, I don't ever make a move as, as for money. Like I'm only spending time and energy on things that I want to create, but the business stuff that I create, I still want to measure it by its success and its success will be measured by its return on my invested right, capital. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. You have, you went from like, fuck you money to like, whatever's above that. Like fuck you have, you have like money. spirit, you have like spiritual, <laughs> spiritual money. Spirit money. That's <laughs> crazy. You have spirit money, <laughs> yeah, and, bro. Like think about that shit. But, but, but. Like your but, ancestors are rich, bro. But, but, because and, of and, you. And, and I'll tell you. It but, reversed. Hey, but, but. It went back hey. down the bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> you no, made man. so much money. Your, hey, your great grandfather's rich in Idaho. Look, <laughs> look, look, no, look, I'm the last, look, I was the last person to carry the deer deck name on. And now my son is the, the final deer deck to continue the, the oh, legacy fantastic. of the deer decks. 
We and, need to talk about that, yeah, too. And so about he, how you keep him out of nightclubs and away from cocaine. Yeah, and shit. no. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, the Rich reason... Kids. Yeah, the, the reason, like, it would, like... I, I can see parents and how their kids are going to start doing coke, for sure, <laughs> right, at school. You know what I'm saying? Well, this guy, for sure, <laughs> is fun. Sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, sense. and it's, like, it's my, like... Think of the think of the way that I operate, and then think that I dedicate the majority of my time to my family, yeah. right? And so, like the kids don't even know they don't even feel me working, you know what I mean? Mm. Because of how much I am there and pick them up from school every day, take them to school every day, like at how I'm I've never missed a pediatrician appointment, you know? I've never like I am, you know? There's nothing I've ever missed, Hands right? On. And so it's then that's the personal development in your greatest creation is these beings that you created through this absolute true love that you have with your wife. So it's like shaping them into incredible human beings is ultimately what your goal is. But then what are you? You are the ultimate example. You and the, your, your wife's love, your representation of how life can be balanced and happy and harmonious is what they get to look at versus like, where's dad? Oh, dad's in Hollywood tonight. They even, fucked yeah. up at Hyde. Yeah, you know. He's all fucked up at Hyde. still, it's Hyde yeah, still right? He's going to be up at five o'clock and meditate. <laughs> but he's going to meditate still. He's still drunk meditating. <laughs> he's eternally <laughs> meditating. He's fucked up. How did you... How did you become Tony Robbins, bro? Like, honest, because, dude, yeah, listen, what, bro, what? you, the last Rob, I, so I obviously didn't pay enough attention, like, as of the past few years, but, like, you used to just smash shit, like, girls even, you would be boozing, <laughs> like, getting fucked up, breaking shit, and now you're just like, dude, the harmonious combination of the true love of my wife, the output that is children, and the spiritual money that I could pass back up bloodline has produced an award of all time man, appropriate and man. efficient, optimized cyborg oh, human. Man. Like I'm like, rah, man, bro. I want to live with you and just talk, inspire you every day, <laughs> and you just regurgitate it back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, you know, I I go back to that moment in time, right, where it's like, I. I knew that I was never going to find true fulfillment in the life. I, I wasn't meant to continue to live that life. And I was feeling pressure as I got older of like, is this how I'm, I'm going to, am I going to just going to be in the club when I'm like 45? You know what I mean? Like still like, like. Think about this all the time. You know what I mean? Am I, am I Leonardo <laughs> here? Do I continue to date like young girls like forever, you know? And, and really it, it, it it started with that whole idea of like, who do you really want to become? Yeah. Because some people do, some people truly do want to do yeah, that. That's you what, know what I'm saying? saying. So it's like, it's, it's like, that just wasn't for me. Correct. Like I knew I wanted to evolve in, in really in the beginning, like there's no part of me that, that thought that like, I didn't even want to write a book. I'm, I was on like Lewis's podcast early on in like 2016 when I really finally built the whole, I've started realizing the vision of what I'd created since the 2013 sort of 360 deal. And, and like, even back then it was like, Oh, I just want to, I want to build all this. I don't want to like talk about it. I want to go and build it. And then once I built it, it was like, Whoa, like, look at what you were able to create in such a short amount of time. Then it began, like, I almost became satisfied because almost like i created such like a, a level of wealth, if you will, in just overall like success and life and in in all aspects that it, I shifted from self preservation to like generational preservation. Like I shifted into this sort of legacy feeling of like, well, what can you leave behind? And it it accelerated me towards this like idea of like, man, I want to this worked for me and it's like so much more unbelievable that I want to create this. I want to work to get this into uh, a tool that ultimately other people can make their own version Replicate. whenever they're ready and, and, and like be able to go do it themselves because I don't want to be Tony Robbins. I don't, I don't even want to like shoot the podcast for more than a, a few more years. I don't want to go around and like, do speeches and be a speaker like I get some energy from it there's some performance aspect to just doing interviews and stuff but that's why I want to create a software 
that every person in the world can use to design their life and master time, energy, and clarity to live a harmonious, high-quality existence. That's, that's, that's cool. That, see what he's trying to do? He's trying to automate into actual AI now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, he wants right. to really become a right. cyborg. But but imagine if if it began to guide you for sure. yeah, for and sure. led you towards your ultimate, like, your version of heaven on earth, right? And and that's are, really are you, what it would Are mean. you religious? Because it's funny you just said heaven on earth. What you're describing is religion. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. I mean, to a degree. I mean, I, I, you know, when, when I hear him say, like, you know, journaling led him to his, like, relationship with God, you know, it's, like, always, like, ah, oh, it's so fascinating. You know, because God's hard. I, I, it's hard for me to be religious based off of, you know, looking at the historical evolution of human beings and what we've sort of, like, learned in the last, you know, 100 years of sort of how the entire universe is made up and what it is. But... I'm, in the, I'm, in the push the button, I'm, on, I'm on the exact push right. the button, right. right, but... I'm but, on the exact but, opposite. But, 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 but to that point is... <laughs> It there's I mean, it's still I, been I, you created. read the Bible. There's so many things that were called into fruition two thousand years. Yeah, but, but, but if you subscribe but, to the Bible, then that's automatically is again. You guys have started off in total disagreement. Yeah, and, and again, no, no, and again, but, but look, but forget about forget about the Bible. Forget about the Bible and, and religion. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm whatever you're now. selling. You, I'm all the Old Testament. <laughs> oh, I'm in the Dudek machine now. Uh, but but it's like you know there was a creator, and you know that everything's connected. So it, and it's it will never be able to fathom it. So when I I feel connected to the universe and feel much more spiritual. Uh, but I don't necessarily tie that to a specific. a specific religion. You know what I mean? It's hard hard for me to connect it to to a religion. Although I do have, I I believe all the principles in there it's, are the principles of what it what it what it takes to live a high quality happy life. One thousand. Yeah. You two you, are you, very aligned. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, um, I totally agree. But it, it, it's almost it's almost irrelevant because we're ending up in the same place. Yeah. You know, it's just where I'm trying to be a good person. Yeah. Why are you making that face? No, I just, I just, no, I just, that was funny. Because you're not, a, is he not a good Oh, oh you think I'm going to hell, motherfucker? No, I do not think you're, you're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting those pineapples. You're getting the pineapples. You think you're going to heaven? Well, no, yeah, no, you no, do. No, no, hey, no, no, it's no, well, no, hey, no, hey, hey. I just agree that we're all going to the same place. Wait, what? Which is, I believe that, like, yeah. there is no, 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 a we all, we all, Sorry, I, I'm saying <laughs> the Billy Club. Like, where <laughs> is it the where Billy Club? Go? Here we go. <laughs> no, we're, we're all ending in this. In, we, the conclusion is the same. Like, whether it's yeah. whether you want to call it spiritual or religious, it's, you know, be yeah. a good person, lead a positive life, That's where be I good am. to those around you, yeah. and love. Yeah. But at the like, end of the day, look, at the end of the day, you are trying. Again. Stop fucking smiling but at me like is, a pervert. But that is smiling. a pill. No, 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 but, but those but, are but the look, core pillars like, of Christianity. But, but look, well. any, look, the truth is, he's not going to say it, but you're going to hell. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to say it. Listen, but, dude, no, 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 if hold on, I know hold on. anything about Christianity, you're not getting forgiven, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, look, it's real. Jesus, but, if but, you but, watch this podcast. But, but, <laughs> no, no, but as, as per his religion, you have, as long as you're still alive, a chance to repent and ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you. I'm going to do it right before I die. And then yeah, good <laughs> you, luck. Good if luck. You, hey, if you time it, then you're fucking, <laughs> and you got, if, you can, if you got good timing, I'm gonna time you're going to see that man in heaven. You're going to see that man in heaven. in the presence of God. So this is when you said you were going to say I'm sorry at the last second. Get, the, yeah. get out of my face, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, fascinating. That, but that, no, I'm that, so sorry. I have yeah. to say this week is kind of ironic that you said that. I, I am on the opposite end because when I came to my my like spiritual realm, which I, I, I try to tell people if you're in a hard life, do something spiritual because it does help. But I read stuff in the scripture that blows me away that I'm like, yo, this is so on the nose. Like just things like washing your hands when Jesus was like, make sure it's running water. Now you pause that, you don't think for a second, but you go 2000 years, you're like, they didn't know about washing your hands and bacteria. How does he know that it has to be flowing water? It has to keep run. Maybe they would you talk to Fauci hands. about it. Who, you don't know. See, this is what I'm talking about. Now we're on the. Now we're okay. on a playing field that we could <laughs> we could testify to. But my my What's thing. What's that is, word? Uh, test. I can't. Testimatize. 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 But my my thing is, I, I read the Bible and it was on the opposite end. I yeah. see how the world is created. Yeah, and and look, and I and I think that's the beauty of the Bible as it relates to how important faith is and giving you that sense of security yeah. and ultimately the harmony that you need in life. My mother's the same way, right? So it's like my my mother, same with my mom. you know what I mean? It's like, she's like, it's the bane of her existence that 
our kids don't go to church. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know, her and she's just praying every day that both of my kids will become ministers. Right? Like, it's like... <laughs> Quite an arc. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> no one's you know, arc. Right. And so it's like, <laughs> yeah, like I, so to me, I see, I don't, I try not to like, I would never tell anyone of faith of like, hey, here's my like reason of why I don't like necessarily connect with religion because I think it's powerful and very important to those that it matters to. You know what I mean? And ultimately, like, will the payoff's guaranteed? The payoff's guaranteed because like you you live your whole life like in the faith and then like you're you're good to go in the end. And if you're so if you're wrong, we're all wrong, but if right, you're right, right, thank God you so, so right. this your is life my like problem. That. This is yeah, my problem. No, 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 because people think I only read the Bible because I'm terrified of going to hell. And this is a huge No, I'm not saying that's your thing, no, but, but that's this is why right. a lot of people yeah. don't want to do religion. Listen to me. Yo, I can't believe that you are part of this show. <laughs> like that like that you would be that religious and then these maniacs, you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Like we needed a, someone to tie it off. <laughs> yeah, like, we have the full 360. <laughs> Mike, Mike, is, Mike is a Christian yeah. as well, but George yeah. is the super religious scholar. Yeah. Of the and, and listen, and I'm, I love I, it. I, I love your preaching. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't. I talk about it. A lot, like a lot of people get upset or they love it, yeah. but I, I talk about it because it is, it is me. I live yeah. it and I try to live it. And I'm trying to be a better human. But th through the gospel, right? Yeah, because I yeah. feel like there's wisdom that is put on there for me to learn from. And, and it's through your perspective, mm -hmm. right? So when you read it, your perspective is already through the lens of, God, there's so much great stuff in here. And like, oh, I connect with this one and you get it where I, re I read it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, this is just like, like, this is so fabricated. And like, there's so many holes in here. Like, I read it through this like much more critical lens um, as, as I look at it, but I don't, but I'm not, I'm not trying to make it wrong or I'm not even trying to contemplate it at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, right. Yeah. And make no mistake there, they, for, for me and Logan, both, um, inside our heart of hearts, we're a little bit scared of like our God denial is going to come back to bite us when we die. You know what I'm saying? So pineapple. You know so, I'm saying? so when you go to hell, we've talked about this on the show, Rob, when you go yeah. to hell, it, every single day when you wake up, the first thing that happens is they shove a pineapple into your asshole. <laughs> and here's the problem, Rob. It's not the pointy end. It's the wide, wide side at the bottom. Mm. So wide yeah. side first, yeah. straight into yeah. your butthole. Yeah. yeah. And if you've not prepped for that you're, for life, yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're fucked. Yeah, let the, you luckily for me, that's, that's going to be painful since that butthole's never seen any action. <laughs> I, I'm just going to end it with this because I don't want it to go down a spiritual thing because I love debating oh, in a healthy yeah. way. Yeah. And, and, by the way, and, and by the way, Rob, I, I love debating uh, biblically in a healthy way because I think it's yeah. it's important for everybody yep. to share their beliefs Be and respect yes. the yeah. other person. Nice, so I respect everything you say. The one thing that I just want to just like leave it, it just because it's in my heart and I want to say it to you. Mm -hmm. um, hypothetically, there is a God. Forget heaven, forget hell. Mm -hmm. And you're on this earth, you have children, you've been very, very fruitful. The only thing I just want to leave this off of is there is a mighty God out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just starts by inviting him into your life. Be like, hey, I don't think you exist. Be honest. I think your book is completely trash. I Whoa. can point. No, for real, be open and honest. Because if me and you had a relationship, it only works if we're honest. Here, here's the problem, yeah. right? <laughs> is I have a relationship with God, mm. right? Mm. But it's... God to me is the creator in the universe. Your God. Thanks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, so I don't believe there's no God. I believe there is like a creator. I believe that there is something way beyond our ability to understand. Mm. I'm connected to the universe, which I, which, but I don't connect to religion, right? Because there's so many different like religions. Do, do you pray? I, I don't pray. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I meditate, Grateful. right? And even when I meditate, like, I'm, you know, I use it as a tool. Like I listen, I sit in a, a you know, a, an egg. Okay. An actual egg. Uh, it is like, it's called the Soma Dome. It's like basically an egg that comes down over top of you. It has light <laughs> and sound and a guided meditation. And the meditation is about your connectedness to the universe and your ability to create anything you want in life. And then I just sit in there and picture myself in the future. Right. Because to me, I don't, I'm not contemplating life. I'm trying to live a big, fulfilling, amazing, rewarding life. I, I don't spend much time, um, you know, like putting energy into what the end will be like and what, what, what is it all for? Yeah. Because I would rather like live it to the fullest and, and continue to live it at a high level 
and energetic level uh, on a continual basis because that's where true happiness is. You know what I mean? That for me, so you know. Could you do me a favor? Yeah. After I have a healthy debate with somebody who is on the opposite side of my mindset, I yeah. say I say this. I would I hope that you could meditate and and talk to your higher power. And if I'm wrong, I yeah. pray that your God saves me, figures me out. And, and I also I go home yeah. and I go, God, I want I invite you into his life to open up yeah. his eyes and heart to you. Now tug it out. Oh my man. Wait. Okay. That feels like the like the right ending. But um I did want to talk about the passing of Big. Yeah. Because like I said, man, that that show like was my childhood. That that and you know, The Bachelor, as indicated on if you go on pie. about this, I'll throw I'm just saying, yeah. you know, I watched The Bachelor with my papa. And Robin Big with my brother. <laughs> what we did. And uh, what an amazing show. Shit. Yeah. What an amazing show. You Best. Sort, sort of sort of even pioneered the, the reality odd couple format. Again, you know, you, you, you've done a lot of stuff. Well, first. keep in mind, like, there was no such thing as, like, comedy reality. The yeah. only hybrid back then was sort of what the Osbournes was mm. because they were funny together. Mm. But it wasn't, like, when we pitched them... Like, we went into MTV and pitched. It was called Best Friends. Like, I came in with the song, People Let Me Tell You About My Best Friend. Yeah. And they were like, but when I, they wouldn't buy that show. They bought Rob Dyrdek's Rules to Success. And rule number one is always surround yourself with good people. And he was the person um, that I surrounded myself with. You know what I mean? Like, and then when we shot the pilot, it was terrible. Like, they made us write an entire script, and, like, second day of shooting, like, was, like, we're in the kitchen, and we were supposed to do this whole script, and all the executives were in the living room uh, watching us. We were supposed to be, like, saying lines, uh, essentially. Yeah. And then it, he's like, he's like, man, if, if we were in prison, I'd get you. And it's like, okay, first of all, you couldn't even catch me. Oh, I could run you down. <laughs> you couldn't run me down. And it, like, it was, like, it was, like, that moment was, like, then it was, like, no, like, let's have a foot race now. It was, like, forget about the script. Like, you could, let's see if you could catch me. Like, and, like, that, like, then they began to see, like, oh, no, like, this is. Let it run. Like, this is who they are mm. is, it is a buddy comedy, but it had never existed before. So they didn't understand how that was even possible. Then they allowed allowed us to like create and and really Shane Nickerson, who was a story editor, uh, was brought in to really reinforce like here's how you build story around these guys, which allowed it to become Robin Big instead of being you know one one season and done a pilot and done yeah. of Rob Dyrdek's Rules to Success. You know, many horses. I, I've <laughs> many horses. Well, oh no, my look, God, I wanted many horses just, so long because of you. Just you have to understand. I went on a I went on a mission to figure out how to get a small horse. <laughs> <laughs> this is real you, life. Dude, Behind you made the scenes, mini horses. I'm not kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> Listen to me. Like, and so I, when I go to the network and say first episode, I'm getting a mini horse. They came back and said we don't like it. We don't want to do it. And I said, okay, all right. So here's the deal. When the season opens up, there's going to be a mini horse here. So <laughs> <laughs> you guys can either film it or, or, you know, and I had made such a big deal about it of like, I'm getting like, don't tell me what I can do. It's my house. I'm putting a horse in it. And then when we shot it and showed up to pick up that horse, it was the realest moment of Big Black being like, man sure you want this big ass horse right because it wasn't it was like it was like a pony yeah, you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah, yeah. it wasn't like in my mind it was like a dog like this big yeah. but damn this thing's good we can't even pick this thing up <laughs> and like it it but i had committed and it was like yeah 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 you know what i mean and and it created this you know obviously incredible device but never had a relationship with the horse oh, we were never cool like yeah. like that they, they're notoriously mean though they're Not super mean and like <laughs> luckily we found like a place for him to live and you know i had to spend all that money to build a switchback trail down my property to oh, get him down oh, wow. and then we would literally shoot a scene and i'd be like peace and like then the handler would come in and take him down the switchback and take him to somewhere in burbank and then when we'd shoot a scene like oh. and bring him back yeah so the relationship uh, soured pretty quickly oh, man. It, when I realized that this is livestock. You know yeah. Yeah, Imagine yeah, all yeah. those MTV producers are like, we told you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, no, at this point, they're like, it's gold. He's yeah, a yeah, genius. Yeah, yeah. He's a genius. The mini horse is such a good idea. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, it wasn't, the relationship wasn't, uh, wasn't what you'd think it was, you know. You weren't horsing around. Yeah, and, and then look, you know, I think for him, it's like, the, the sad part is like even... 
he was, ch- it, man, it was chasing him, right? Heart, heart condition was chasing him. Like everyone in his family died young. He was doing everything he could nonstop from like going to the doctor, like super consistently. And he was still in his thirties at that time, you know, and, and going super consistently and then getting preemptively getting a defibrillator. If like his heart shut down, it would shock his heart back on like all of this doing every single precaution, like even in the year that he passed, like he lost like a hundred pounds and like got through, did so many, just doing everything that you possibly could in order to not have it catch you and still caught him. You know what I mean? Like it was just race chasing him down his whole life, you know? Not not to uh, trigger you or uh, hopefully this doesn't come off sensitive, but, um, if Big were alive today, how do you think he'd be integrated in your life still? Uh, you know, I don't know. Like when I think about, um, you know, because once because once Fantasy Factory ended, you know, because you got to think like we, you know, keep in mind, I wrote the idea for a skit and a skate video. You know what I mean? And like we didn't like cast it. We called like the San Diego local security company and was like, we're looking for like a big guy that's kind of funny. Uh, uh. Like and it was just he showed up and we shot the skit for the skate video and me and him just just started flowing and then then the skate video blew up then we did a car race across europe together and they filmed a documentary about it and that's when jeff tremaine saw that and was like you guys should do a show you know what i mean like well really ruben fleischer who was the director of that uh documentary showed it to tremaine and both of them were like you should do a show you know now but it was it was taxing and then we had a blowout like in season three because it was like you know, for him, it was this idea of like, oh, you're like this guy's security guard when really like it was there was mm-hmm. a lot of tension between me and him. And then inevitable yeah, and the then way. creative tension. And then and then once, um, you know, we blew out, then I was like, really, I sold them ridiculousness at that time mm-hmm. because I didn't want to shoot a show in my in my house. But they offered me all this money at the time, 125 G's an episode to do another reality show. And that's when I um, wrote Fantasy Factory. And then, you know, we didn't talk for a long time, you know, probably like a year and a half. And then, man, it was like, you know, we were in like season like three or four of Fantasy Factory. And like, you know, he reached out. I don't don't know why we connected back. And then it was just like, it wasn't even, it was, we didn't talk for like two years. And then the moment, like we talk, you want to shoot this show, and then he was just immediately back on, and then in Fantasy Factory to the very end, you know, well, not even a question. We didn't even. He's like, man, I was just being crazy. Whatever, let's get back to work. Like it was that clean and easy. And, and and you know, when I when I think about like like you know like how he was integrated into my life up to that point, you know, post Fantasy Factory, and now, you know, I'm I'm just really happy that he was able to meet and I have this amazing photo with my son right after my son was born. Mm. You know, like right before. Um, in, in that sort of aspect. But, you know, you, you think about this world that we live in now, like ele- his comedy and perspective lends itself to this format. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, it, even though like, like it's just that, that off the cuff, like being that sort of voice is like, I could see him in like a podcast zone for sure. For sure. In, in this zone, you know what I mean? For sure. You've, you've done a fabulous job of, setting your life up where there's so many characters around you, right? Yeah. Janelle West Coast. Yeah. Drama. Yeah. And these are characters we've fallen in love with and now have amazing lives of their own. Yeah. Um, do, you think, do you think Fantasy Factory was as big as it was because of Chanel's laugh? <laughs> Which is like you that. Just by the way. No, no, man, just he just turned into her. He just like we, man. He just can't escape oh her. My God, oh my god! I like told that. you, he <laughs> steals yeah. like an artist. I feel like you yeah, hit on that one. He, there he, is, he steals there everything, is, bro. Yeah. Dude, He's like, wow, that's a laugh. pretty he nice did. laugh. <laughs> 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 and it's funny because you don't even like it, it. It doesn't even exist in Fantasy Factory that I remember. It, it may have showed up from time to time, but it would never. And I think even when we initially shot Ridiculousness, I don't even think I fully noticed it. It wasn't till it became like this literally. I mean, it's a thing. It's a oh, my God. Where it became this like half the country like despises it. Polarizing. Half the country 100%. loves it. You know what I mean? It, it, it was it's always been this like <laughs> bizarre like like thing that would become so instrumental in this like like binary hate or love type of thing you know what i mean i could relate to that 
I can relate to that polarization yeah, for, for sure. sure. For like, sure. She, and Chanel, she's awesome. I've I've, yeah. I've spent time with her in real life, and she's kind of the same person. I don't know. If yeah. You you. I, I disagree. Know about it, really? I disagree. Really? I think she's I think she's way more gangster in real life. Yeah. You think? So? Yeah. She, she strikes sense. me as a gangster. Like I could see her with a like a gold a forty four magnum. Yeah, that could happen. Like for sure. Man, if, like, you, if she could hear that, she would just be laughing when she hears this. She's just gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So true. So true. But 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 drama yeah. too. Yeah. No no offense, drama. I'm gonna ask a, a question that might offend you, but no offense. Uh, drama's kind of bland. Yeah. You no, know? he's pretty like a, a vanilla guy, and yet we fell in love with him. Yeah. You were able to 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 make this guy just like. Like I think or, or he, 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 I think he was it. just so relatable. I don't know, relatable, like, but also like <clears throat> none of y'all took yourself so serious, too serious. Yeah. yeah, and look, I think that's that's like also like the core of like who I am, and obviously him because he's like my cousin. But we just, you know, it's like look at what we were able to create and be a part of and get to do, and and then you know to to the point of like look at look at not getting trapped by the life or ever being controlled or boxed in by anything and then elevating and evolving. It's like this constant sort of being in awe of life, which never takes um, anything too serious. And for him, you know, I think, you know, he got caught in sort of this being jammed in Robin Big and then like we really allowed him to sort of evolve because in real life, he's super smart, super, super talented, smart. you yeah. know what I mean? And, yeah. and has gone on to find like, a ton of success and really you know even as he built his own podcast it was to share his voice like that goes beyond like i'm not like rob's cousin from robin big and then a a someone to like tease on um you know fantasy factory you know and there, there's certain time you know like one episode where he was getting attacked by the bull yeah and yeah, yeah. and like so it was finally like let's get you into like let's give you a hero stunt to do and like he wouldn't do it Cause you know, when you get attacked by a bull, you got to like wait for the bull to hit you. Right. So you got to get in front of it, taunt that thing and let it hit you. So for me, I'm used to being the dude that has to go there, get your mind right. Here we go. I got to get attacked by a shark. I got to flip this car. I got to like jockey this horse. I got to jump this monster truck. Like every, for fantasy factory, I had to get into like, here you go again. You got to go do the crazy thing so that you're in that day of like going to the bull ring and just not having to do anything dangerous, I felt so good. <laughs> and then after like an hour, he wouldn't let that bull hit him. And they're like, you got to go do it. And then I pulled him aside. I said, listen to me. Listen to me. Do you want me to steal your shine right now? Is this what you want? You Ooh. wanted this stunt. You want me to go in and be like, oh, drama couldn't do it. Here comes Rob again Ooh. to do it. Is that what you want this story to end at? And it was like, <laughs> finally, like, got in there and just, bam, and let that thing yeah, hit him and yeah. do it. You know he has I mean? that energy. Like, like yeah. again, I feel, I feel, actually feel bad about saying that. He, he appeared to me as, like, a pretty, like, straight man character at first. Yeah. Like, he's the straight guy that we're going to, like, fuck with and, like, have fun with and he, he like he's a good gauge of relatability is yeah. but then again as time went on I, I could almost see him in real time finding himself like as a human as a businessman a as, as now a partner a dj i guess yeah. young and reckless well, was yeah, amazing yeah, like yeah. like he they produce so much music yeah. you know what i mean like that's how i met sterling and sterling was like the a and r for yeah. like he repped all these different producers and they were they were placing music with a bunch of artists through the studio in the fantasy factory like so many different people kind of like evolved out of there, you know what I mean? And and so it's like that's who he really was. Yeah. He also you know get, he also yeah. made it on impulsive before Rob. You know what I'm saying? Like that's hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. We, we've been asking Rob for a while. This is Rob Deerdeck. I know. You know, like, that's the first time you ever asked. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think so. Just kidding. I don't know. I don't even remember. Dude, I we no actually idea, had so. Chanel and Andrew. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. We've been so, trying to get you on in a roundabout yeah. way. Like, if we get you. everybody but, else on, <laughs> but it Rob, will magnetize. But I had to get to this level to make it worth it. You exactly. Know what I'm yeah. Drama yeah. guys. As he leaves, he's like, my today's rating is four. four. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't love that Christian gentleman. I didn't oh, like him at all. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to let my mom listen to this one. Oh, be like, you should listen to him. Listen to George. Find your relationship. I go home. I'm like, please let his kids be reverends. Please let his kids be reverends. I, 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 there's there's one more thing. I, is I, it skateboarding? It, it's it's the skin, it's the skin <laughs> routine, brother. Fuck, I, I, okay. I mean, we can talk about skateboarding. Nah, I, the skin routine's more. But I, I just I, you know, I get the honor to spend time with with Nyjah and some of mm -hmm. these these guys. You know, Bo and mm -hmm. David Loy and all these guys. I love. I grew up in BMX, Woodward, Pennsylvania. My whole life was centered around action sports. The only thing I cared about, just like it was the only thing you gave a shit about at one point in your life. I just want to ask you, like, you know, what? Who were your inspirations? 
when you started skating, and then who do you see now as kind of like the torch carriers for for the next generation of skaters? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm for me, you know, because I grew up in Ohio, and it, and it's like kind of a weird place to end up to 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 become a professional skateboarder. But there was like a serial entrepreneur. Uh, that owned the skate shop there who would start throwing all these big demos and big events. And so like, I really like locked in on like, man, I, I want to become a pro skateboarder from the very beginning. And and to me, my vision for the ultimate skater is like Mark Gonzalez, right? Like, like super creative and technical and, and rock stars like Christian Asoy, you know what I mean? Like, like skateboard, the beauty of skateboarding is you got to make it your own and evolve into your own sort of, um, you know, style, the tricks you chose, all of that stuff, you know, and really, you know, you, you got to think like I created my league because I grew up in a world where like when skateboarding competition became irrelevant and then it it had a resurgence, but it was done through X Games and, and do tour and all yep. this stuff. So even when I created the league, it was about elevating like all the authentic pro skateboarders and giving them a platform. And one of them is Nyjah. You know, because you got to understand, like, Nigel was, like, dead broke when his family came to the first street league in Phoenix, and I paid for them, their hotel rooms. They had no money. Wow. And then that kid won his first con pro contest at 15 and and won $150,000. That changed his life and his family's life. And to me, it was really all about putting all of those, Paul Rodriguez, Tori Pudwell, Ryan Sheckler, giving all of these guys this, like, authentic platform that we didn't have from our era uh, to 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 be able to showcase their abilities on the on the mainstream, you know. So, um, like I'm, you know, am always connected. It will always be a skater, right? In the sense of like you just look at everything on its skateability in the world, you know. It's like <laughs> ah, ah. that rail you know, ah. right now. Yeah, no, but in, like, a, in, a, in a way, it's kind of analogous to like what you're doing. Like what what can I do with given given what I have. Right. And yep. then it's like, and think about it from a failure perspective, like you and evolution, you want to learn a trick. You have to keep trying it over and over and over and begin to make adjustments and learn from it until you finally get it. Then it's like, whoa, now it's, now it's embedded in your system. I think like that's how I've like really at, that's what was sort of the core basis of even the system that I developed. Um, that, that is the machine and my machine mindset and all the systems that I have today is based in that sort of skate mentality. That's so funny that you mentioned that that never goes away. Like every time you walk downstairs, you see like a, uh, like Hubba or like some big ass ledge. You're like, right. yo, this ledge is fucking sick. You're like four, you haven't skated in 15 years. That's what I'm saying. Everything is skatable. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh man. Yeah. Oh. I, I was like that with, uh, with lawns. I didn't skate. I, I mowed lawns. Yeah. Time you were like, Sunday, my, no, every lawn. I, I, mean, I go, I could do some good lines on that. Yeah. Yeah. Lawn. Like, where I'd imagine myself cutting that line. I look at oh, tables yeah. and talk and think about the lines I could do sometimes. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Look at this guy right here. Could Michael. snort this thing. So that's a great table. Dude. Yeah, that okay, the height Michael. of that table for like a house party, like four a.m. Oh my god! I hey, think. I would argue that this ha that there has been that it has a happened here. Dude, I was holding a gold percent, Olympic Mike. gold yeah. medal one time at a party in L.A. while people were doing cocaine yeah. off of it, and that I didn't do the I don't do cocaine. I've no. never done it. it scares yeah. me. But Horrible. that moment, I, I was a definitely a hey, what the fuck is going? <laughs> What Olympic gold medalist gave me their medal so people could do cocaine off it at a party? I'm sure they could deduct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they could. Somebody watches right now. I'm, I'm like, oh, pretty fuck. sure they could easily deduct that, that if they needed to. About. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 a little bit different of a question, but kind of similar. Skinner but I want to ask it because I believe there's a kernel of value in it for a specific subset of go getters. Uh, when you wipe out, when you eat shit on that skateboard, why do you get back on that board? Yeah, I've always had trouble, not just skate. I've tried it. BMX, dirt bike, razor. When I fuck myself up or the thing that I'm using, it's really hard for me to pick it back up, man. Yeah. I get scared out of out of the hobby. What about getting knocked out? I have yet to get knocked out. What, the Paul thing was fake? What, Paulo Costa? Yeah. That was fake, man. You got got dog. What? Oh, you got clickbaited. You clickbaited Rob Dearden? No, I clickbaited everyone. Yeah, that was you obviously specifically fake. got robbed, bro. No, you thought I got knocked out by Paulo Costa. What? <laughs> You're a piece of shit, Logan Paul. Damn, bro. Come bro. On. Well, I'm glad you we told me. We takes. We I'm glad you told days. me because it's just been embedded. When I'm looking at you, I'm just seeing bam, bam. No way. I'm, just, I'm glad you told me. No way. I feel different now. Uh uh. I've never, never. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I thought, I, I thought for sure you could relate to that. That's why I got back up and got the punching. No, but uh, no, but some, some, some boxers, really good boxers, 
Same thing. We'll get knocked out. It is different the yeah. next time. Well, look, you, you can see it in MMA, especially like when, yeah, when yes. you, you know, when, and cause here's, especially when you're an undefeated fighter oh. and you've just been running through people and maybe you get some challenges, but you keep running the, f- like it's sometimes it's worse and we'll see what happens, you know, how Usman like, um, uh, like comes back and yeah. evolves, right? Like, because, you know, I think of like Orvlovsky where he was just running through people and never lost and then got knocked out and never, never quite was ever the same. You know, it's like because you find you really got doubt punched into your subconscious to where now it's like you're fighting not to get knocked out is what what can sort of evolve. And, and as as you know, fighting is so mental. Right. And your self-belief and as as you're evolving through it. Right. And and so to me, when I think about like the slams and the crazy like none of them, none of them was ever, ever broke me. I never had major surgeries. I never, like I, I was able to dodge it pretty well. You know what I mean? So I never took like a hit that, that ended it for me, but my body began to break down. Mm. Right. So from taking like the little hits and the abuse over time, my body and all the stunts that I did, like my body just began to break down and part of like my evolution and elevation in life was then like, like, you know, having a doctor come to my house five days a week oh, for, really? you know, the last seven years and just learning every bit of my entire body and rebuilding my body. That's why I say, like, I'm going to be healthier at 55 than I ever was at 17 because I've figured out my whole body and I've been able shredded. to rebuild it. Yeah. And one of the um, one of the special outputs of that is beautiful skin right <laughs> okay let's do it i need let's to know let's go right I'm just now kidding. let's do it I'm right just now kidding. i need to know but I'm just I, kidding. I just do want to touch on that question one one really quickly with why do you get back up after those falls as someone who was concussed off every dirt jump multiple times knocked out cold on the ground broken ribs torn up uh shins from primo super meat tenderizer pedals mm. stitches scars everything that was the only thing I cared about. Yeah. I didn't care about TV. I didn't care about going to do my homework. I didn't care about hanging out, playing baseball what with my friends. Health, I didn't care about shit except for every time the dance competition magazine showed up at my house with new Primo parts, new S&M stems, new S&M dirt bike or homes, XL edition, 21 inch frame. Mm. I wanted every part, every mm. stem, every fork, every tire. Mm. It was the only thing I cared about. And so when I, when I feeble the ledge, and mm. I smashed my face into the fucking ledge. All I cared about was nailing that trick because yeah. I loved it and it was the only thing I had and that culture was the only thing I knew and the only thing I fucking cared about. And the descent, listening to the Descendants mm. and fucking just jamming Seven out. Seven seconds, exactly. Fugazi. Exactly, Fugazi, Man, exactly. Dude, all that. I didn't exactly. know you had a, a skateboard Man. phase. Look, look, I had look. one, I had one. I, I got there with my Walmart board and the guy, <laughs> the guy fell off the thing. I'll never forget this. It was literally, all, my mom didn't even park the car yet because my mom came with me. And uh, she's parking the car. Some dude went up and landed kind of hard. And I was like, wow, that looked like it hurt. But it wasn't that that scared me away. (laughs) Somebody was like, yeah, pussy. And then he took the board and smacked the dude in the head with it. And I was like, maybe this isn't my sport. Bro, people people see that (laughs) and don't understand what skate culture is like. Every piece of recklessness that is ingrained in my body Sex, drugs, all that, all is a result of skate culture, oh, wow. bro. Yeah. Skate culture is one of the most destructive, <laughs> fucked up places. You go to a skate park, the shit you see, the shit people will piss on. I was dis- the shit I was people will break, as a bro. Kid because I, yeah. it's I was a afraid fucked to go up to the skate place, park. Yeah, yeah. and it made us, it, bro. People would fight Especially in all Columbus. the time, bro. Columbus yeah, skate dude, park was sketchy. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Skate parks, dog. Is that where you you, got, you grew up in Columbus, though? Cleveland. Right? You grew up in Cleveland. Um, you where'd you grow up again? In Dayton. Dayton Flyers. That's right. All right. That's right. Jim City. Dayton is where the Wright brothers flew the first airplane. That's right. They invented Dropped bicycles. Dropped the skincare routine. Just say No, it. look, look, look. But I want to say to that, okay. in, in that passion that you had that makes me want to, to get on a bike, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, and the thing about that growing up in that culture and being like, man, it was like, like, it was, it was almost like broke me as an adult. Right. Because that sort of I thought like that's why I was working so hard and growing haze and going high and low and partying and doing stunts and going crazy. Like and I, it just kept elevating and getting bigger, going from skateboarding to now flipping cars and getting attacked by sharks. And now it's television, all this stuff like because I thought that's the only way I could create success. Right. It, it's like because I grew up in that world of like where 
everybody quit high school and everybody had to fight. And those that even made it beyond like, like creating any life for themselves, like it was always like a boom and bust. It was like, it, it was part of the, the way of being of what that world was. And so I had to, to, to grow out of it just the same in, into now reflecting on it and being like, oh, look how much it shaped me, mm -hmm. but not allowing that same identity that I created from the era of being a pro skateboarder and being so reckless that that became the way I operated in, in Robin Big and Fantasy Factory, like, like growing out of that, if you will, and finding success beyond being reckless is what I needed to do in order to sort of transition as a whole. You this know was I mean? a really important show for me. Like, you're talking directly to me right now. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Because I'm still very much that kid at the skate park ready to flip out on somebody for cutting me off when I want to drop in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but, I still but love, let me, let me my just life tell you this right now, that I didn't figure out life and become truly happy till I was in my 40s. You, know you still saying? have a year, bro. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> three years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and 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 I was peak like Vegas for my 37th birthday, like jet to Vegas, like yeah. uh, you know, like like peak like partying still at that at 37. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And so, this is crazy. I'm yeah. so happy for you, Mike. Yeah. For so me, look, the Mike, there's hope. Give you hope. Mike, all you gotta do is is begin to look out in the future and be thinking about what would truly make me happy and fulfilled, wow. and then begin to put put the plan in place to to start growing towards that. And when you're 47, you're gonna be as happy as can be. That's awesome. Thank you for that, Rob. <laughs> I appreciate it's, it's, that. It's, it's crazy to think, uh, you know, you're, you're you're talking about being peak physical health at 55, and it's crazy to think that. That's not even half of your life based on your own personal goals. You want to live to be 112. That's correct. I want to live to be 150. And I think, I think I'll be able to do it. I honestly think I'll be able to do it. Why? Peptides and stem cells. Yeah. Are you, are you on stem cells? No, I'm are not you on, on stem on, cells on or peptides. But You're not on either? No. Test? But, but no. At NAD plus? No. God dang. Th this surprises me. The you, only thing you, he's you, on you is... You strike me as a biohacker, not a somadomer. Because yeah, the skin. But, but, the skin. But, but I'll tell you, it's like I do do my blood work every year. But but I've found... We do it every week. Every, every quarter week. I do my blood work. Right? So, so because I want to make change in it, right? And so um, my, my brain... Brain, blood brain barrier, my my leaky gut, my testosterone, yep. my cholesterol, all these things I started doing for the first time in 2012. And you can just see how healthier and healthier I've gotten every single year to where I'm like, like how I'm my body is functioning at a higher level than it was in my 30s, right? Mm. In the data of the blood work. And it's only from like essentially reorganizing the relationship between my muscular and skeletal structure and then all the neurology and all the internal organs to where everything's turning on and off the way it should. So it's so efficient that it's like it, there's, you build up all these compensations in your muscle structure that then put pressure on your organs that then create inflammation and all these different sort of things. So when I say, like I'm the, the quality of my life is elevating then both like from a like a uh, mind share perspective and a mental energy, then it's backed by the physical energy that's, that's got to this, to this level. Like it's, I can see myself getting healthier and then it's like, how do I get to a sustained level of peak health that then I live at, uh, for the next 50 years to 112. Like I really think, and, and I don't know that I'll be able to beat with all the innovation of like sort of all the stuff and longevity that they're in the middle of creating. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to time it, to extend it. I don't know. But what I want to do is build a life in a rhythm to my existence, if you will, that prepares me to capitalize on it like and test it as I get older mm. to to push the 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 potential length of my life and make sure that I can live it at a high quality in a balanced fulfilling way the whole way through. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. This dude, like, compare him to Milton right now, for example, <laughs> dude. Caleb, can we get a pan to Milton? He's yeah. tired. He's had a long night. Yeah, well, he's always tired. You know, and you guys are the same age, by the way. Well, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> uh, skincare no, routine quick and then, yeah, and then we'll shut it down nothing I don't even do anything fish what? oil yeah. fish oil no the number one thing is filtered water filtered water get a get a Jolie uh, filtered shower head because all your chemicals and everything that's going to destroy your skin is in the water 
Not a not a skateboard, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the last thing. Yeah, we actually would love for you if you would. Do be they always have to do it on the show? With I don't know. Maybe he's got a story about a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think he does. He just wants him to sign it so he hey, can sell hey, it online. Hey, I I I I do want to tell you that another painful thing that existed in my life that was ego based is the Alien Workshop is the company that I rode for my entire career. Oh, shit. Right? This is an Alien Workshop skateboard. God Almighty George. What? What has he done? Okay. What is, what wait, wait, hold done, on. George? It comes with a story. Go ahead. Okay. Right. And so this why are you gonna what are you gonna no, burn? No, this? Wait, I'm what nervous. are you guys doing? You about to burn it? I'm nervous for you. So I'm I was there when I was like 14 years old and helped name pick the name, right? It was Alien Workshop based off of Massive. Project Blueprint and uh, Project Blue Book and Hangar 18 at the Wright Patterson Air Force Base in, in Dayton. Helped pick the name Alien Workshop, like went on to be pro for it for 20 years. It got acquired by Burton. And then I bought the company from Burton, right? And so it was. Like every advisor I had was like, this thing burns money and this is a hornet's nest. This is one of the worst businesses. This is not <laughs> something you could buy. And so I'm like, I didn't understand business. I didn't care. It was like, I got a TV. I'm going to elevate the brand and take it to the next level. Like, like went to this big, you know, Zoomies. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Zoomies 100K, like big Zoomies 100K announced that I'm going to buy the company back, bring it back to the culture. And then the entire company imploded and like like literally like went out of business under my management and all the pro skaters quit on me like it like literally i spent like you know 2 2 million to buy it and like 4 million to operate it like all this money lost all this money and because i did it out of like i wanted people to be like oh he came and saved the alien workshop and i ended up taking the company and giving it back to the original owners, like took the L on everything so that they could just keep it. I bought a bunker in Ohio to move it back to Ohio and gave the company to the original founders so that they could just operate a lean, profitable business themselves mm -hmm. since they had sold it away already. And then that was sort of like shaking my hands of like, okay, like you're not you are not skate anymore. Like you are, ah, you have evolved beyond it. Yeah, ah. it's like that was, and that was the same time as that 360 deal. When I, <laughs> when I look at this board, you know what I think about? I think about we're in the stages that you were here. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that you just dropped some wisdom on us. And, yeah, uh, yeah. We 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 have a, a segment as of yesterday. It was George's idea yep. that we get memorabilia related to each guest and have them sign it. Yeah. If you're okay with signing the skateboard, of course. Oh, um, I really appreciate that. Sorry, what do we do with the stuff now? I, that was the one we haven't. We turn it into what, NFTs, uh, yes. <laughs> 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 and then we just make millions. <laughs> we make millions. <laughs> Wow. Ladies 10 out of 10. 10, this, out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 podcast. <laughs> Literally. Rob bro. Dyrdek, thank you for coming on Impulsive. Man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it you guys. It has been so good, guys. Continue you, to grow and evolve. Always, every day. Hit that subscribe I love button. This. We love you guys. We love this podcast. Continue watching. Continue supporting us. And we'll continue supporting you via this program. All right. Take it easy. Peace.